That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about To Catch a Killer, the fourth film directed by Damien Zifron, which is being released courtesy of Vertical Entertainment on April 21st, 2023. Did you say directorial debut? No, it's the fourth film. Oh, fourth. But his English language debut, notably. Do you know any of his other films? Uh, yes. His 2014 film, Wild Tales, uh, in the words of Faye Dunaway, was the talk of Europe and all of Cannes. Because uh, I remember it competed... Uh, in Cannes that year, uh, and he was kind of a, an unknown quantity, and that was a big hit, and ended up being nominated for BAFTA and an Oscar, and then I think a lot of uh, projects, English language and Hollywood projects, were kind of being thrown about that all fell apart, so here we are finally with this film, which shot in uh, Montreal in 2021, and the original title was Misanthrope. Which I wish oh. it, I wish it had kept because that makes a lot more sense than a title that kind of unfortunately reminds us of the hit Netflix series. Oh sure, How to Catch Killer. I liked this movie. I did too. Uh, considering how it's being released and kind of the lack of enthusiasm seemingly about it, I think it's a lot better than you would expect. Yeah, I think it's a very effective like crime suspense thriller procedural. Mm -hmm. Okay. Baltimore, New Year's Eve, a talented but troubled police officer is recruited by the FBI's chief investigator to help profile and track down a disturbed individual terrorizing the city. Um, I don't know if this description is correct because it's saying that the FBI's chief investigator is Ben Mendelsohn, mm -hmm. but I think he's like the police chief for the Baltimore PD. Right? No, he's FBI. Oh, he is? Yeah. Okay, so the troubled police officer is Shailene Woodley, and the mm -hmm. film opens on New Year's Eve with this mass shooting. I believe 29 people are killed. Mm -hmm. So the FBI chief investigator, Ben Mendelsohn, I think the weakest part of the story is how he recruits her, but he does, and with her help, uh, they track down this killer. But a big portion of the film is how the police, the media, the mayors and governor's offices along with the FBI, like them all working together, they're, they're really working against each other because mm -hmm. everyone wants to get the shine first for catching them. And we see how like the media meddling and releasing information doesn't help. But, so I thought that was very effective. And then we're chasing this killer who we ultimately catch. But at that point, Ben Mendelssohn's character has been fired. So they're kind of like, they've gone rogue, he and Shailene Woodley. Um, but they catch him and Ben ends up getting killed. Shailene convinces the killer not to kill her and like surrender. But then of course the police kill him. And then Shailene is left to reap the rewards of her efforts. Which because of the bungled efforts of the FBI for firing, uh, the man that, and the woman that would find the killer, uh, she is offered kind of a, a deal in exchange for her silence. Which we can talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, so what did I like? I like the story. I think it's well written. Mm -hmm. I think all of the performances are strong. Mm -hmm. I like the way the film looks. I do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, was, it feels like it has a budget. It was shot by Javier Julia, who previously shot Wild Tales and last year's Argentina 1985. So obviously a pretty damn good cinematographer. There are a lot of little visual details along with like little details within the story and the dialogue that I think gave this... It definitely made the film feel elevated. There's a lot of texture. That, yes, that that's is, the word. That is lacking in a lot of films that are a bit more vague or maybe not as well researched. Because even... Uh, I mean, even right after the first shooting and the killer has bombed out the area where he was shooting from, the ballistics team is doing this thing with lasers that I thought looked really good. Uh, That's my next note. Yeah, that looked really good. There was a lot of tension in that mm -hmm. opening sequence of the various people being shot and killed. Mm -hmm. um, I have to laugh, though. Every time you see Baltimore, I think of John Waters. So I'm like, this is clearly not the John Waters uh, portrait of Baltimore. Because I, I actually thought it made Baltimore look... You know, despite the heinous killings going on there, uh, like a pretty nice place to live. Whenever I think of Baltimore, I think of Little Mo. But anyway, oh. um, a lot, I mean, I can think of a lot of really good scenes. So the movie's like two hours long. And so by the 25 minute mark, I believe, we're told that the police think they, or the FBI have found the killer. Mm -hmm. So of course the audience were like, well, this is not possible. We still have an hour and a half left. So they end up like cornering this kid we find out is like a high schooler who's Middle Eastern and they're throwing all these stereotypes on him like he's a prime suspect. But he also fits a behavioral profile. Right. Yeah. 
And that kid ends up committing suicide. And then the explanation for why he might have, because of all the bullying he would have received, I thought that was very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so what I also liked is that Shailene Woodley's character, we get a lot of background on her. We find out that she's just like a lowly Baltimore Police Department person, but she did try out for the FBI and she was found to be unsuitable because of her psychoanalysis results and she's addicted to drugs, which... She has addiction issues. Or she has addiction issues. So I think that combined with her relationship with Ben Mendelssohn, who... The way he sort of scopes her out is <clears throat> he is briefing all of the police people. And then after he's done, we see that Shailene and another cop are in like the break room. And the other cop is talking shit about Ben Mendelssohn's character. But she kind of, she doesn't defend him, but she has her own perspective that Ben overhears and he likes it. Mm -hmm. So then he kind of introduces himself to her. And then immediately we cut to the next morning, she's requested to meet him. She hasn't requested. He has requested to meet her. And then we find out that he's looking for someone to be a liaison and she will work with him personally to help solve this case. Which was giving me vibes of Sicario with the El Emily Blunt character. I felt like for a situation this serious, it, it felt a little flimsy that he would just rely on this random person and he puts so much... He invests so much effort into her. He does, and at first we think it's sexual tension until we find out he's gay. But it very much is also giving that Scott Glenn, Jodie Foster um, scenario in Silence of the Lambs as well. Yeah, I really... I, I, I like that little sort of twist that mm -hmm. his character is actually gay. Well, because he has a good... He's, she asked how long he's been married, and he said since we were, we were able to. And I'm automatically like, oh, he's gay, and then the next scene... And then we meet his husband. So... I think the best scene in the film is, so the killer who opened the film with the 29 kills, we see him walk into a mall, mm -hmm. or we, we believe it's him, and he's doing all these weird things like changing and eating, and it's a pretty long scene, mm -hmm. which culminates in him killing like another 25 people. Mm -hmm. I thought that like 15 minute segment was very, very good. Yes, well, you know, especially we also watched this film on a day where there was another uh, mass shooting. Unfortunately, like, yeah. Well, uh, but then included in that segment is we get served. So we watch it all happen and then we watch the FBI looking at surveillance of him doing it and picking out little clues. I thought that was super well written and mm -hmm, creepy. Mm -hmm. Then we immediately, well, then Shailene's character is working with another person. Oh, Giovanna Depo. Mm -hmm. And they are forced, because we see in the footage that the killer threw his shirt in the dumpster and that trash was taken to the landfill. So they have to go and like search through the dumpster. I thought that looked really good. That, yeah, look, the production's quite... There are also some really cool upside down shots. Mm -hmm. What do you think those were about? Of this, well, like a world turned upside... I, every time I see that, it's like, we're about to enter, the, the world is topsy turvy we're upside I down. I liked it. There's a scene with her swimming in a pool upside down. Mm -hmm. um, then... Another good scene is Ben Mendelssohn's fighting with the police department and the mayor or governor's office about releasing the footage because everyone thinks that that'll be beneficial. Like maybe citizens will recognize this killer and turn him in. But Ben Mendelssohn is like, no, that's going to open up a new can of problems, but they do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So then we get a long segment of the Jimmy Kittredge show, like this live like news talk show. And we start getting people calling in, not being helpful, which is exactly what Ben said would happen. Mm -hmm. And then we get one guy calling in basically saying, like, he's like a proud boy type. Like, there's a like, like a hidden army in this country and we're going to get you all. So then we get another really good scene where Ben and Shailene and everyone go and follow this caller because, of course, they trace the call. And then we get a scene in, like, a CVS where there's a shootout. Mm -hmm. And, the, and even before that happens, we see the FBI trying to vacate the CVS. Very quietly, yeah. That was very tense. I thought it was but very But as soon effective. as we see that like crippled old man, I'm like, he he's going to mess it up. I know, but it was so good. I, I, I really did enjoy it. Was it was good. And some of the camera, you know, <clears throat> there's a shot early on with, in that coffee shop where Shailene is overhearing um, Ben Mendelssohn speak to the guy working for the... The, the, mm -hmm. the mayor or the, the governor. The emissary yeah. of the mayor. Uh there, there's one of those classic kind of De Palma close-ups where we see uh, kind of 
her in extreme close up with the background kind of fuzzy that we're clued into the audio on, which I don't know, is a flourish I really like. Uh, I think it was an interesting take because usually we see these things and how so many investigations are bungled because of uh, multi jurisdictional issues. Uh, and the reason, because Giovanna Depo's character, Mackenzie, has a, a, a line about how friendly fire is what brings down a lot of investigations because someone wants the credit. And they're all kind of, it's, it's not so much as maybe Mendelssohn wanting the glory, it's that if he opens it up, others will take him down, which I guess was not a, something I'd considered before as a possible yeah. reason yeah. or why, well put. why these problems still exist between these law enforcement agencies. Another good segment is how the killer is found or, or like their big lead, which is that early on in the film, the apartment that the killer used to shoot from was empty. So they're like, we need to figure out how this person got the keys. Mm -hmm. And then they hone in on like three like uh, maintenance men type people. And one of them, Shailene has a bad feeling about. And then after everything's kind of gone awry, she's like sitting in the bathtub and it comes to her that the one guy she felt weird about, he was outsourcing work. So it's probably one of the people that this contractor was outsourcing work to that he didn't want to say because that was against his contract is probably the killer. So her going to his house, confronting him, I thought that was all very like, it provided me with what I needed. And then they get clues as to the killer and he used to work at a slaughterhouse. They go down there. It all just um, escalates very quickly, but very strongly. Mm -hmm. I was very satisfied. And by the it. killer Dean is played by Ralph Innocent, of course, a, a pretty good character actor. I don't know if you remember him as the dad and Robert Eggers, the witch. Oh. He has a very commanding kind of voice and presence. And a good part about his character is usually in films like this, when we finally meet the killer, everything happens very quickly where they're taken down. But in this movie, we meet Dean, the killer, and he gets a pretty long monologue with Shailene after he's killed Ben Mendelsohn and his mother kills herself. Because mm -hmm. she's like, boy, if you don't get help, then, I mean, it's over. And no matter what, I'm out of here. And she kills herself. But we get a long monologue between Dean, the killer, and Shailene. And him explaining what he wants her to do, which is basically like, I'm going to let you kill me and light me on fire because I don't want the police to have my body. Mm -hmm. But then as she's agreeing to do that, police show up. And then he gets mad thinking that she double-crossed him. And they have kind of your standard scene where the two, like in every other movie like this, but she does convince him to not kill her and surrender. And then like I mentioned, of course the police come in, guns a-blazing, mm -hmm. and kill him. Mm -hmm. Um... We should probably wrap this up, though, because my battery's dying. Uh, what else do you want to say? Uh, I kept thinking about comparisons with the different... How this is a di this film in today's world is a different kind of tension than, say, something like Silence of the Lambs. And I kept thinking about implosion versus explosion, which, you know, previously, I think we used to be scared of what people were doing in the, the deep, dark secret of their lives which, you know, is still scary and still happening. But now we're living in a world where this is kind of the terror that we live under, where it, it's, it, it's exploding everywhere, it's happening everywhere. So to me, it's, it, it's hard to compare those two, even though I was thinking about it and how there are a different set of mechanics at work, mm. is what I kept thinking. It's like, because The Silence of the Lambs is technically more terrifying to me because it's, it's hitting something in like the subterranean ver part of my mind where this is like, this is something, a cold, hard reality that we're dealing with every day. Oh, uh, we were going to explain the deal Shailene gets. So when everything's said and done, the governor, the mayor's office, whatever, want her to sign a thing saying that she won't talk about how they bundled the case, like the FBI and the police department. And she's like, no, <laughs> but they go, the, the deal she gets is you need to make me a special agent for the FBI. You need to give a posthumous medal of honor to Ben Mendelssohn's character. And you need to make sure his husband gets his pension. And if y'all play games with me, I'm going to blow up your spot. And then we see her walking away. Mm -hmm. I was very satisfied by that. I was very, I, it, again, it was after seeing a lot of films that just aren't very satisfying or maybe could have been if A, B, C, D, E, F, G had come transpired because uh, every film is a collaboration uh yeah i was impressed what's the director's name uh damien zifron good job damien who's, I... who's directed the most uh i think it's worth noting the most uh successful argentinian television series oh. the pretenders and wild tales is considered the most successful argentinian film of all time apparently i think i'm going to give this film three and a half out of five okay. i thought it was very good 
You, I think you should watch Wild Tales. Okay. Uh, I'm giving it three out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, <laughs> oh,